Hi, I'm Steve, and welcome to a video tutorial to request management on Service Desk Plus. The tutorial will cover the following areas. We've got the data flow process, which makes up request management, to give you a better understanding. Then look at the module interface and how to manage your request within there. Then look at creating the two different types of requests, which the module has in the background. And finally, we'll look at processing these requests in regards to reassigning them, emailing out, and generating a resolution. Okay, let's start by discussing what request management is. It's the main module that makes up the service desk system. It's a channel that the business communicates any queries, requests, or issues it's got to the IT department. When the IT department receives these calls, they're then processed as a request, which then can be efficiently analyzed and resolved by a technician. Essentially, the main goal to request management is to log everything. The data flow process of the module starts with the input channels. These are phone calls, emails, personal visits that get processed as requests. The thing to note about these methods is that they are communicated by requesters. Not users, callers, or customers. They're known as requesters in the system terminology. That terminology is followed throughout. This brings us on to the first part of the call logging process. You'll need to decide what type of request you're wanting to create. The system has two types. It has a service request and an incident. I prefer to call these routine and non-routine requests. Routine requests are requests where we already know what the resolution will be. We also know the process in which we need to achieve it. Because of this, we should be able to work out how long the request will take to complete. Examples of these routine requests would be things like password resets and desk moves. There is a quick call feature for these types, and it's known as a service catalog. Non-routine requests are requests that will require additional investigation to find a resolution. This means the priority will vary, and there will be no estimation to how long the request will take to complete. If you create a blank request, you're essentially creating a non-routine request. Examples of these non-routine requests would be things like PC hardware error or server failure. There is another quick facility for these, which is known as an incident template. Going back to the data flow process, let's start with a routine request using a service catalog. The service catalog will record details of the requester's call. Yourself or a designated technician will then process this request using guides and set tasks that have been associated to it. After that, a resolution can be created. If the request is satisfied, the request can be closed off. A non-routine request via an incident template starts with the same process. Details of the requester's call are logged and recorded into a request. However, after this process, yourself or the technician will then need to investigate the request further in order to determine the resolution. This investigation could lead to involvement with other modules such as problem or change management. The problem or change request may need to be created as part of the request resolution. The resolution may also need to be documented as a solution item to prevent future issues. With the data flow out of the way, let's move on to some examples and see the system in action. First on the list is the request management interface and how to manage your requests. Starting at the top, we have a breadcrumb trail and a direct request search. Next to that, we have access to archive requests and a page refresh rate. Below the navigation is the interface window containing the filtered requests. The details columns to these can be removed from the right hand side option. You can also sort the columns by clicking on the headers. At the top of this interface window, you have the request filter. From this, you can quickly filter any displayed requests. The standard filters are self explanatory, and admins can create any additional department filters if needed. You can also create your own filter here, which will populate at the bottom of the list. The filtered results can also be divided into the two root request types the incidents or the request service requests. Okay, before we finish in this area, I've got two tips for you to consider. The first one is with the request filter. If you use the open example, I've got eight requests in view. If I change that to incidents, that list drops down to seven. I don't like this feature because I feel technicians can miss requests if they're not careful with it. The tip I have is to always set it to all requests 
at all times. The second tip I have is for the priority column. The system uses a priority matrix to categorize how important requests are. To make use of this, you firstly need to select the column and we'll probably move it across. You then need to set it so it sorts ascendingly so that your most important calls are always towards the top. The next task we're going to look into is creating requests. We'll start this with the non-routine requests using service catalogs. You can access these in two ways. Your first way is with the drop down menu towards the top left hand corner. This is the menu you'll probably use for quicker reference as a technician or as a call logger. You've got all the headings to the left, which then filter to the actual service catalogs to the right. The other method of creating these is through the home screen. This is the method that the requesters will more likely use. You've got a nice interface here with the categories at the top. And when you click on those, you drop down to the service catalogs. Service catalogs also have a description underneath them. For this example, I think we'll use a lever. Okay, this is a service catalog form. It looks identical to an incident form. The differences are in the SLAs in the background. Starting with the top, these first six fields kind of define the status of the request. To the left, we've got things like a request type, what type of request it is, whether it's an incident or a service request, a few extra ones there. Under that, we've got the status, which you should have seen before, whether it's closed, open, with the user. Underneath that, we've got the mode of how the request was entered onto the system, whether it's entered via an email, or service so service portal. So the right hand side of that, we've got the priority fields. Firstly, the impact is who it affects. Whether it affects the whole business or just a single user. Under that, we've got the urgency, uh, whether it's a critical or a low. If we have a, a business impact and a low urgency, this gives us a priority of three. This is a priority matrix working away. We change that urgency to a critical, the priority moves up to a priority one. Underneath that, we've got request to details. If you enter into a name, the system will search for its list and bring up the Active Directory details related to that. So underneath this, we've got a contact number, job title, and a department. To the top right, we've got an asset. The system will also search through the assets on the system. And if it sees that this user was last logged into this asset, it will associate the two and relate them. So that's always handy to know that this requester was logged onto this PC at that time. The final set of fields we've got are for the request content. From here, you enter details about who the request is assigned to. So you'll choose a group, a first line, and then a technician. For the first line, this will notify all the first line technicians. And to notify any additional technicians, you enter them in there. To the right of that, you've got the categories. If you look at that, we've got the category headings, which you'll see in the service catalogs. Underneath that, you've got subcategories, and then you've got the items themselves where you need to drill down to. Following on, we have a subject. Self-explanatory, you need to enter a quick subject that will always display and help you identify your, the request. And then the final content is the description itself. On service catalogs and incident templates, these will be partly filled in, so you might need to enter details such as an employee name and such. You also can add links in there. Underneath their details, you have a site. We'll select KK House. Additional details you can have on service catalogs, these don't come on incident templates, will be your resource details. In this case, we've got employee system access. So all the systems that the employee had, had access to and will need to be removed. These are tick boxes. Under that, you've got yes, no questions, such as, is there any IT equipment to be returned? Oh, is the lever form signed and submitted? Attachments will be found on both incident templates and service catalogs and also on a blank request. 
You simply add attached files as you go. Tasks can be on both incident templates and service catalogs. This will create a task on the request and it's assigned it to the person the request is associated to. Uh, in this case, we've got remove JB access, remove carriage access, and we can untick these to, to not create the tasks if they're not needed. Finish the request off and complete it, sign it over. You'd click the add request button. You can also reset it to how it was before or cancel off. Okay, that's service catalogs. Let's have a look at incident templates and see how they differ. Go to the drop down, look at facilities management and morning checks. We tried to keep the layout identical to service catalogs so you know where everything is. So you've got the statuses, the priorities, request the details, who it's assigned to, and the categories. The difference between the two methods of input are with the SLAs. So for an incident template, the system will use its standard SLAs and what we've defined for that. In this case, it's usually by the impact, impact method. So if it affects the business, you'll have a business SLA. If it affects the user, you'll have a user SLA. For the service catalogs, each catalog has its own SLA. So if it's a password reset, there will be a password reset SLA. If it's a desk move, there will be a desk move SLA. Okay, as I said, everything, all the fields should be the same. There is an additional service category field, the incident templates. This is just for the drop down menu. So you've got categories under there. You've got the same subject, same description, no resource details. That's not available on the incident templates. But you do have tasks and the ability to untask request. And then you just add, reset, or cancel the request when you're done.